Good morning and welcome to Herb Oracle Podcast, botanical divination with herbs, essences, flowers, and trees with your host, Herbal Marie. Let's start the day off pulling some oracle cards and getting a few messages. We can shoot the shiitake in a spiritual way-ish. And if you follow me on Instagram, I'll post a pic of the cards at Herb Oracle. Thanks so much for joining me. Here we go. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. It was kind of hard to come inside this morning and record a podcast. It's just one of those mornings that beckons you to stay outside a little longer. So it's actually almost eight (laughs) o'clock. Whoopsie. Um, Yeah, I've had some really great mornings on the porch. Just the sound of nature and um, the hummingbird. I don't even wanna say the hummingbirds because it's actually just one hummingbird that I am connecting with. I mean, there's other ones that come to the feeder, but. (laughs) <laughs> hummingbirds are very territorial and uh this little one she she'll chase everybody away it's her it is her hummingbird feeder but um and i'm like you guys are silly because like there's more than enough sugar syrup for like a hundred hummingbirds like you guys like learn to share but anyways that's not my problem i'm not getting into other people's spiritual journeys at this point <laughs> everyone's on their own But what was amazing is just this weekend, she has started becoming very curious about me and wanting to connect with me. And she's coming very, very close to me and hovering right in front of my face. Like I'm talking like, yeah, like a foot in front of my face, like almost too close. (laughs) and you know, like when when like somebody's too close to your face, and you're like, hold on, step up, step back. This is a forty year old thing, probably forty plus. It's like if it's too close, you can't read it, right? <laughs> so it's almost like just a couple inches back farther. But she really wants to check me out, and um, I do love her coming in close because when I'm out on the porch, I don't have my glasses on, so I can see her like when she's at the feeder, but. I can't see the shimmer in her wings and the very, the, they're amazing. The colors on them are amazing. And uh, the way the light hits them and her little beak, but yeah, like her beak too. It's like once she gets a foot in front of my face, I'm like, please don't try to get nectar out of my eyeballs. You know, <laughs> please don't try to get nectar out of my eyeballs. Um, but it's incredible. And um, so I sat really still and I was calm and I just let her be in front of my face for as long as she wanted. We're talking like 30 seconds here, you guys, like a long time. And then she buzzed off and I just sat there and kind of nodded and smiled and that was good. That was, that was so good, you know, like, thank you universe. Those are the type experiences that I love so much. So yeah, this little sweet hummingbird is, uh, wanting to come in closer since I'm there on the regular and she knows where her sugar comes from. Oh, she knows. <laughs> so anyways, I'm here. It's it's a little bit later. I'm a little bit like from being outside there must be they're cutting hay right now and and uh some just ever so slightly nasally and sniffly just from being outside, but it's wonderful to be outside right now. Um Fall, autumn is like, she's here and she's ready to, you know, do her autumn thing. She's making a mess of the yard. Everything's fallen over. My pear trees are snapping and breaking off because they're so heavy with pears. Um, But it's still beautiful to be outside. And I cut my Tulsi back yesterday. Oh my God, that smelled so good. Um, Just to see, like, it had gone to seed and you know, you see the new shoots forming. So I cut those dead seeds off. I took all those seed heads and took them into this patch by the back porch where I call it the butterfly garden. It's just chaos. But there was an area that like, it's like, girl, if you want to grow there next year, you can. So I threw all those seeds, um, there and, uh, yeah, it's just been like really nice being outside 
and uh, looking at the sky and listening to the birds and the bugs. And yeah, I'm loving it. I really am. So anyways, last week we ended with, we're doing Laws of the Universe. Um, today we're doing Law number 42. So last week we ended the week with Law of Identity, which the, is the right of all, the right of everyone to create one's beingness. So that was a good law. Um, it was basically saying we are our own identity even when we merge with the great central sun slash God. Those are my notes. <clears throat> there was a little bit more to it. Um, but uh, yeah, that was that. We're going to do the law of in intention today. Number 42 is the law of intention. Sniffle, sniffle. Which is so timely for me because I really felt like like, okay, yesterday morning, I woke up to a quiet house. I swear to God, I almost podcast because I missed you. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, the house is quiet. Like, I don't usually do Sunday podcasts, but, but then I didn't. I didn't because I was like, no, let's just wait till Monday and let's see what other energy can come through. Um, let's see what other energy can come through. And uh, what came through yesterday was amazing. I rode a wave of intense, motivated clearing for my space. So all the little spaces and shelves and areas, pretty much all of them, I think I'm down to two areas, I decluttered and tidied and rearranged and cleaned and dusted in this most easy, beautiful way. And they were just little things that I did, but all the shelves look so much better now. And things feel tidier and I washed a few curtains and I don't know what was going on yesterday but I was like go with it girl like cuz this doesn't always happen <laughs> and uh, yeah when my space is more clear um, it makes me feel better that's why I, I love minimalism I'm obviously not um, but I do have some minimalistic characteristics um, and I when I let them flow and I honor them I do love this space and really I think having less stuff is the way for me and I've downsized my wardrobe and I mean just stuff that I I kept on to because people gave it to me but I really didn't you know I gave a lot of stuff away and as I constantly download download downsize um, like my kitchen and and we just did the dishes that has made my life a hundred times more efficient and easier just only having one plate per person and having everyone be responsible for their own plate cleaning it the kids are doing great my future ex-husband um, refuses to wash his plate and bowl and silverware and cup but hey i refuse to pay the rent <laughs> so <laughs> i don't mind actually washing his um and really, because I have limited to only having one of each, it's not a big deal. So I did do some dishes though, like when the pots and pans get get kind of piled up from cooking, but it's much easier when I don't have a hundred utensils. So I think the next drawer I'm gonna organize is the knife drawer. Like I'm ready to hide more of the knives. Even if it is just putting it in the tote in the garage, right so should push come to shove and we need more they are out there but just getting them hell out of the kitchen so smart so smart all right well i'm off on a tangent a little bit <laughs> how did i go from the law of intention to talking about my utensils well here's the thing i do have a point to all this <laughs> i do have a point i was kind of like thinking about how um Okay, so for about 60 whatever episodes now, I've really just let you in on my drama, on what the hell's going on in my life and what it, how it is. And as I ended last week and was contemplating everything that we talked about last week over the weekend, I was like, dang girl, like you need to start using your words more powerfully. 
You need to start speaking into existence that which you do want. You need to be more intention, affirmation, focus led and quit telling the stories that do not serve you. So I really gave it to myself pretty straight there. And um, yeah, so I was like, all right. So I was like, we're going to, I'm going to really actually try to do that. I'm going to stop telling the stories again and again (laughs) that don't serve me, which is of course the stories of not having enough money or support um, because it's like, hey, you're not going to get more money or support for your projects by telling those stories and focusing on the fa- on that. You know what I mean? So it's like, all right, so I'm going to knock that shit off and I'm going to start being more positive. And I have tried this before with this podcast, I think, <laughs> like a month or whatever ago. Like I was like, every day I'm going to tell you things I appreciate. And like that only lasted a couple of days. Like that I was purposely telling you about that. Of course, I did just tell you about the hummingbirds and I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am focused more and more on the positive. So anyways, it's just kind of interesting that I was already setting intentions for myself to be more powerful with what I know with my words, with my focus, with my intentions. And then today it's law number 42, the law of intention. So ha ha, big ha ha. That's funny. I'm so glad because I'm on that same page. So let's dive into it. All right. So after I take a break, drink some tea, now we'll dive into it. Um, number 42, the law of intention. When a person's intention is held in the mind and action of the physical effort does not follow, people create false impressions of self. He or she thinks self is good or better than actions prove. Energy must follow intention for that which is perceived as good to happen. Let me read that one again. Energy must follow intention for that which is perceived as good to happen. All right, roger that. When an act of kindness is performed and intention is such that one wishes to be recognized for goodness or has underlying motivation which is not of the higher order, Higher rewards will not be forthcoming. Intention and effort must be of the higher vibration to gain or create spiritual accomplishment and reward. If a person gives a promise to another to do something and has an intention to do so, but does not follow through with action, this becomes a lie, a breaking of one's word, and creates karma. Okay, (laughs) so that is law number 42, the law of intention. All right, so basically it's like your intention that you hold in your mind has to line up with your action of your physical effort. If you, if it does, if action doesn't follow, you can create a false impression of yourself you can think yourself as good or or you can think yourself as good or better than actions prove energy must follow intention if you if the for that which is perceived to be good to happen so you have to yeah you have to make the intention but then you have to have your energy follow up with it you have to have the right action and it has to be for the right reason it, you can't just be doing acts of kindness if you just want to be recognized for doing it or if your underlying motivations are not of the highest order. Your higher rewards will not be forthcoming. See, that always trips me up because I'm like, well, wait a second, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> but maybe it's like 
it's like, well, do you have too much of a vibration about money or something? Like, and it's, it's junking up, it's junking up your, your motivation or, hmm, it always trips me up. This kind of shit always trips me up. But I, I'm glad because I want to like self check myself all the time. Intention and effort must be of the higher vibration to gain or create spiritual accomplishment and reward. So it's like you have to have pure heart, pure mind, pure soul, pure intentions. And if you don't, you can create karma. If you promise to do something and have an intention to do so, but you don't follow through with action, this becomes a lie, a breaking of one's word, and creates karma. So that all like, well, you had good intentions. That whole saying is bullshit. <laughs> That's what this tells me. Like anytime I'm like, I had good intentions, but I just didn't do to do to do. Um, well, maybe you should be more aware of that because it actually may have created some nasty karma. Not nasty, but just, you know, why do you want to create anything less than good at this point? Why do you want to create anything less than of the highest order? The highest good for your for the all. So yeah, the law of intention. Don't just make them if you're not going to fall through with them. Ooh, that's interesting. Don't just make them unless you're going to follow through with them. And uh, dang. All right, so that's the law of intention today. That was, that was cool. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Hello, Monday. Here we go. All right, so I saw that it was the law of intention. All right, we're just going to set that over there and let that all sink in for right now. So I grabbed the Oracle of the Essences, which really does have um, some great affirmations and intentions with us. And I also grabbed these flower whispers. It's this teeny tiny little deck I got from Tina T. Ames. And we'll have, we'll pull a few of those too. But I kind of am feeling like I just want, I just want, I was going to say one card, but I know that anytime I only ever say one card, I can't do that. But I was kind of just envisioning like one of these cards and have these um, flower whispers around it. I think I'm gonna try to do it. <laughs> I think I'm gonna try to do it, you guys. Have one Oracle of the Essences card as like the center, and then these other um, ones going around it like petals. So I wanna make a flower today. All right, let's do that. But I need to drink more tea and blow my nose first. This is annoying. <laughs> All right, let's 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 take a break. All right, so the Oracle of the Essences. So yeah, if I'm feeling sneezy, I'm just gonna be fully prepared for my son to wake up and be feeling the seasonal pollen in the air. Get some, I think I will make some fresh ginger tea. I think that will be good. Um, and then just load up with the vitamin C. And uh, yeah. But I hope this passes because I was planning on recording some uh, other podcasts today and tomorrow for Herbal Marie. So it's like, come on, come on, body. Let's cooperate here. <laughs> Let us cooperate here. All right. So the Oracle of the Essences, I would like you to give me the perfect card the perfect topic um, on the top. I'm gonna grab the top card um, of, I'm gonna shuffle you one more time, of what could be my focus of intention. I mean, cause hey, as a practicer of, I had good intentions, right? Sometimes it's like we can make too many intentions. Like I intend today to you know, do yoga and, and, and eat this and juice that and, and, uh, write in my journal and sew on my sewing machine and clean the house and wash the windows and organize the basement and clean the rabbit cages and take a nature walk and take a bike ride. And I mean, sometimes our to-do lists are so insane. You're like, dude, you like, you need to have 
You need to have some downtime, you know? Wash my face, do a mask, rub oil on my body. I mean, like sometimes you're like, um, <laughs> there's a lot of things I wanna do. I have a lot of good intentions. So I know there is plenty, plenty, plenty for us to focus on. I'm trying not to sneeze. <laughs> I know there is plenty for us not to for us to focus on, so I just want one thing. All right, so Oracle of the Essences, I I know you hear my request. Give me the perfect card, the perfect idea, topic, theme to place my intentions on today. Oh, here we go. And it is Spearmint Creative Expression. Yay! I'm so glad it's something good. <laughs> All right, so spearmint. And uh, this reminds me that if I want to harvest any more of my Egyptian mint, which really just tastes like spearmint, um, that, yeah, today would also be a good day for that. But creative expression, like, yes, the house could use a cleaning. The windows need done. Curtains, gotcha. But today... You may need to wait because our intentions are with creative expression. So we have a beautiful goddess by the sea and we she's got she's by the rocks and there's a wave splashing in the distance behind her. She's got a scroll open and she's come with a message for people by the sea. So she's definitely got this goddess energy. For me, that says, for me, this card is so obviously like, yes, record your podcast, maybe do a broadcast. I've been pulling some Oracle cards um, on my YouTube channel, Sadie Marie Cherico. And I also even did it once on my last week on my Facebook, Sadie Marie Cherico, which you are invited to connect with me at both of those places. Um, so that says yes, outreach. Maybe this is also, this could be looked at as a reading too, or writing, journaling. But this card in particular for Spearmint, she is connecting with others with the power of her written word or spoken word. So we'll see what it says in the book. Um, you know, this all also goes al along the lines of making our words count more. Like it's not really that I have to like blabber on and on anymore. Um, it's like make what you do say count. And yeah, shout out to Barbara Goldsmith or Goldstein or Gold something. Barbara, she channels the Pleiadians. They were saying this same thing um, with this new moon. It's kind of like this energy of say less but make it more when you do speak. So really, I mean, I kind of love that like even right now in this picture, her mouth is closed. <laughs> it's not that she has her mouth like open, like like in the, in she's not nonstop talking. She's actually has her mouth closed and she's making eye contact with the people before she reads this message on this scroll. And I love her necklace. It's like a choker necklace that is symbolizing to the throat chakra. But she also has a beautiful headdress with a symbol on her crown or her third eye. So very interesting, very connected. Her robe that goes over her head and flows down around her is the same color as the water. She has like come from the water and her dress is like a nice muted light lime green that's definitely symbolizing the heart space so spearmint let's see here so yeah i mean don't feel like you have to talk just to fill up the air space when you're with somebody like definitely quiet down like if you and i met in real life there's a real good chance that i mean i could fill the air space if you want but there's also a real good chance that i could be the quiet one so yeah, I do know how to do this and I do know how to listen. And uh, so let's see what it says about creative expression though, because that's our intention. 
So there's a, um, a wise word from Neetish Dixit who said the worst distance between two people is misunderstanding. So spearmint is related to the throat chakra. Her beautiful smell is very distinctive and attractive to many. Because of the low levels of menthol in comparison with peppermint, spearmint is widely used in the cosmetics industry. Spearmint helps with digestion, aids the respiratory system, and is also a powerful anti-inflammatory. So yeah, like while like my sinuses are like trying to get all gung-ho <laughs> right today, like drinking a mint tea is an awesome idea because one, it's lovely, and two, it is anti-inflammatory to just calm down the forces. Like, uh, calm down, you know, there's nothing to get excited about. Um, we've been drinking goldenrod uh, because that's a good, you know, for uh, seasonal allergies too, but I still have lots of mint, so noted. All right, so spearmint encourages speech, writing, and creative expression. It assists people with speaking their truth. When spearmint personality is positive, the individual can communicate easily and is confident in expressing his or her will. However, when spearmint personality is on the negative side, the individual becomes closed up and is afraid of speaking their minds. They live in their heads and create stories that have no basis, but are only attached to worry. So yeah, if, if you live in your head, you do just create crap to worry about. It's like, why am I even thinking of this hypothetical situation that's so bogus? So yeah, it's like, if you catch yourself living in your head, just be like, okay, I really do have to say what's on my mind or just start speaking a little bit more or expressing myself creative, creatively. Some people under the effects of spearmint personality do speak their truth, but they do it in a way that is harsh and selfish. So yeah, if you're finding yourself blurting out, being a selfish twat, <laughs> check yourself. Spearmint helps you find kind words to stand your ground without hurting others. So yeah, it's like, let's be so mindful of the words we use. Like it's just so much better to shut up and um, really think about what you're gonna say before you open your mouth. Spearmint is like a blue and green goddess. She is holding a scroll representing communication. This card represents clarity and compassion. So yeah, we, those are be great intentions. Intentions for clarity, intentions for compassion, intentions for creative expression. So she is talking to a group of people sharing the truth. There is a surge of power behind her a big wave representing the upswing of energy and liberation when one speaks their truth. So the divination meaning is if spearmint appears to you in a reading, you must find nice ways to express your truth. You might also be guided to express your creativity in some way and you have been putting it off for a while now. This is the sign you were waiting for. Go and do it. So yeah, let's, let's take that um, as our intentions. You can pick whichever one resonates more with you. Um, creative expression, or maybe it's just to be nice and speak kindly or to have more compassion and clarity or want and or <laughs> or just more clarity or maybe just more compassion it's up to you 
but yeah let's get like real focused on what we want to do I love the creative expression because I've already kind of um, I'm doing a pretty good job shutting up and um, thinking about what I want to say but I want to keep on that I really do so here's our affirmation here's our, I guess they're gonna give us the intention here I politely and calmly speak my mind with clarity confidence honesty and ease I politely and calmly speak my mind with clarity confidence honesty and ease so yeah I this is just so amazing actually um, hearing that channel message from Barbara Goldstein I can't remember her name right now it's Barbara and she channels the Pleiadians you can find her on YouTube she's a sweet little I don't know 60 year old lady she's petite the short hair um, she's British or somewhere over there and she's I, you, you'll love her you will love her um, and she was just saying last night with this new moon for us to only speak when we are absolutely certain of what we want to say less is more instead of just guzzling and rambling and blubbering at the mouth instead of saying like a whole paragraph to say see if you can can just condense it down into one kind direct sentence you know and then be more of an ear for other people right now let other people talk right now <laughs> So it's your turn, your turn to talk. I'll just be, I'll just sit over here and be quiet. Um, but yeah, it is resonating with me. So, okay, so that's our experiment intentions. Creative expression, clarity, having more confidence to speak the truth, being honest and, but with compassion, being kind, being easy with our words. And uh, yeah, just, you know maybe saying a little bit less but having a little bit more kindness and compassion in the words that we speak all right so sniffle sniffle it's still here so this will be interesting now with the flower whispers that are gonna go around it we'll see if they even have anything to do with this but I do love that on the card with spearmint it is all about creative expression. So if you have been like holding on like, oh, I really love to work on my creative project, but I got to do the dishes. I got to do this. I got to do that. No, just do your creative project is way more important than your housework. It truly is. So make sure that you have the intention to express yourself creatively today. Do it first. Do your creative pro project first, and then you can go do the stuff that you have to do. It really won't take you that long to do it later, and it'll still be there waiting for you, and you can put on some music this afternoon and just whip through all your chores. But this morning, do something creative. Do something for you. All right, so on that note, I'm going to pull some some flower messages we're gonna do the first top two I'm gonna just shuffle and put them down face down first okay we're gonna do top and bottom for that one I'm going around this goddess making like petals I've made two four six little petals okay so it's cute. All right. So this is different today. I love this. I would have never thought to do this, except then I did think of it, but then it really probably wasn't even my thought. <laughs> Isn't that crazy when you're like, oh my God, none of my thoughts are my own. They're all are my own. Are my own? None of my thoughts are my own. They are um, just always downloaded, you know, from higher self, from the collective, from your guides 
Like everything's already been thought. You're just the radio receiver. So download some creative thoughts today. All right, so I'm going to, yeah, let's just flip them over here. I'm gonna flip them all over at once. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, Cause they are really, really sweet. And um, here they are. Oh my gosh. All right, in no particular order, no. <laughs> so here we go. Here are our beautiful flower messages. Um, let me blow the dog hair. See, I'm like in no hurry today. Blowing dog hair on my podcast. All right, so here's our messages, our quotes with spearmint, creative expression. Your first petal is fragrance clings to the hand that gives the flower. Oh, that is so sweet. Fragrance clings to the hand that gives the flower. So even in life when we are giving, we're giving, 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 we're still receiving the beauty of that gift. Like I think psychology testing has um, actually studied the brain and it's like the brain doesn't even know when it's giving and receiving. It's whether it's giving or receiving, it's that same nice, euphoric, kind, enjoyable feeling. And um, yeah, when you're giving, you're receiving so much more. And the flower fragrance still lingers on your hand as you give out the beautiful flowers. So fragrance clings to the hand that gives the flower. Oh, that is so sweet. Our next petal is <laughs> one of the worst mistakes you can make is to think you're in charge. So yeah, isn't that a shout out to our ego when we think that we are in charge of everything? Um, we forget about our spiritual aspects. We forget about our higher mind. We forget about the will of God. We forget about the universe when we think that we're in charge of it all. Um, we don't let a lot of our divine blessings into us. And then we just get caught up in being a psychotic a-hole, um, <laughs> just way too much in our ego. Okay, nice petal. Our next petal is bloom where you are planted. Perfect quote. Bloom where you are planted. You can have this creative expression wherever you are. You can speak kind words wherever you are. You can make it beautiful around you wherever you are. So wherever you are planted, now is the time to bloom. Our next petal is this really cool looking one. It's black and white. All the other flower mandalas are colorful. This one says, I have to sort of tilt my head to be able to read it. When a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment in which it grows, not the flower. Ooh. So yeah, it's like if you're not blooming right now, honey, there's nothing wrong with you. It's you need to tweak your environment, the space around you and within you, kind of. I mean, I want to disagree with this one a little bit. <laughs> Like you're perfect, but yeah, your vibrational atmosphere could be tweaked. Um, the energy around you could be tweaked. You know, um, there's really nothing wrong with the flower itself. When a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment in which it grows, not the flower. So you amend the soil, right? You amend the soil. You don't go and like try to fix the flower. Um, if your plant isn't producing like you want it, it's something deeper than that. So that is the message for you too. It's like if, you know, it's like your mind and your thoughts and your beliefs, they are not blooming right now. Your appreciation is not blooming. Go deep, go deep into the soil, go do your shadow work, go contemplate what the hell's really going on and start some, start to ground your energy into Gaia, get rooted. You know, get get more positive, get some better soil 
and then see how you do with all that. Our next pedal is know that you can start late, look different, be unsure, and still triumph. So that's what Spearmint was saying. Like if you've been putting off something, like do it now. Okay, you can start late, you can look different, you can be unsure, and you can still triumph. You can still have this beautiful creative expression. You can still bloom where you're planted. Okay, you can, if you've never given your gifts, right, like giving the, the flowers away, your talents, sharing your talents, you can still do that. You can start late. You really can. If you've never connected with spirit before or, you know, the will of the divine, you can still do that. It's like you can still start anytime. Anytime you want to start, you can start. Um, yeah, and you can still triumph. And our last pedal, let's see, now i got to tilt my head the other way. I'm getting my stretches as I try to read around this circle of petals. The last one is, you are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. So if you've been kind of feeling like, you know, you've been planted in the wrong place, right? You're not blooming where you're at. It's like you have a right to be here. You really, truly do. You are a child of the universe. You are a divine child of God, of creator, source, all that is. And you have a right to be here. So bloom where, well, where you are planted and... Um, yeah, just to feel like you belong. You belong here. Trust me, you wanted to come here. <laughs> so yeah, let that be the fuel um, to engage us in this life today and allow us to make intentions to express ourselves beautifully and creatively. So whatever intention you want to make it, make it today and follow through. Make one intention today and do it. Grow it, feel it, bloom it, share it, be it. Make Just start with that one intention. And once you fulfill that one, you can make another one. So shout out to Spearmint with this encouragement to have creative expression within our life, to have kindness within our life, to have clarity, compassion, and yeah, to speak our truth. So yeah, what we give, we receive. Make sure that we are giving with the highest intention, with our energy lined up for the highest good of the all, and know that as we, we, we give, we do receive. Let us give it over to divine will. Give it over to your higher self, to the will of God, and act today with the inspiration from the universe. Be creative. Um, today's the day. Don't wait any longer. Do these things that you've been wanting to do and bloom where you are planted. You can be creative wherever you're at, anytime, anywhere, any place. You can bloom, you can shine. And if you're not blooming, then you need to amend your soil, right? Um, don't try to fix yourself from the outside in. Try to fix yourself from the inside out, but also do what you can um, to help the space around you. You can start late, you can look different, you can be unsure, you can still triumph, right? Like you can do this anytime you want to do this. And just know that you deserve to be here. You have a right to be here. You have a right to be you. And you deserve and have a right to creatively express yourself every day of your life. You are a child of the universe no less than the trees and the stars and you have a right to be here so have a beautiful wonderful day and bloom where you are planted <laughs>